the Skywarn 7 weather team. You can count on us. You're watching KSWO TV in Lawton and Wichita Falls. A police officer in Frederick in hot water. Why his fellow officers had to arrest him and where he is today. And Dr. McDreamy is brewing up a bit of McSteamy these days. The coffee is so good. How the Grey's Anatomy star is now a rival of Starbucks. And are these clouds going to stay with us through the night? We'll have a look at that in just a little bit. You can count on us. This is 7 News in HD. A police officer in Frederick in hot water. His fellow officers had to arrest him and take him to jail in the wee hours of New Year's Day. That's first at four. Police were called to Frederick's Memorial Hospital around one in the morning New Year's Day after personnel said Justin Hicks was violent and had dismantled a hospital room. A Tillman County Court affidavit says he had been drinking alcohol, was bleeding from the head. That Frederick Memorial Hospital staff called police about one in the morning because Hicks was yelling and cursing in the ER and that he had become violent when told to leave the ER. Now documents show he was there to check on his cousin who was being treated for a fight he'd been in. Police arrested Hicks, took him to jail. Tillman County District Attorney says Hicks is due back in court January 26. He is charged with malicious injury and disturbing the peace. Now Police Chief Rick Gill says since Hicks did not physically hurt anyone, he has not been suspended, but they have reassigned him. He had served as Frederick's school resource officer. Now will read be return to basic patrol. Well, we had a couple days this past weekend where we got to enjoy the sunshine, but the clouds have returned and regained control. As you look at Duncan there, mostly cloudy skies, another gloomy day. Temperatures cracking into the 50s, though, for the third straight day. That's a nice little change of pace that we've seen here as of late, 52 degrees. Here's a look at all these clouds. These are actually all associated with the next system that is projected to bring us a fair amount of rain here for the middle of the work week. Here's a look at your current temperatures right now, 52 in Wichita Falls, one better up in Vernon, 51 in Comanche County, Altus in at 50 degrees. Wind speeds have been a little bit of a breeze, but not too bad. We can definitely manage these numbers here, five to 15 miles an hour out of the south. Looking at your evening forecast, we will stay part if not mostly cloudy throughout the evening. Temperatures staying in the 40s through 9 p.m. Our lows are expected to drop down to the low 30s for your morning commute tomorrow morning. Jan. Mears Volunteer Fire Department expanding its station thanks to a $45,000 Rural Economic Action Plan grant. We're just real excited about it. 18. Thanks. Chief Bill Huntingham thanked the Comanche County Commissioners for their support in getting the grant, as well as providing backup during wildfires. Cunningham says the department had already raised $45,000 in matching funds through donations. Now, the money will be used to build a 600-square-foot administration building. The facility will also house a new kitchen with running water and space for more trucks. Cunningham says they should receive the REAP grant funds by April. They hope to, hope rather to start building the new facility by this summer. And today the commissioners elected Don Hawthorne as the chairman and Gail Turner as vice chairman of this year's board of trust authority that manages the jailhouse. And the cafe at the Comanche County Courthouse unexpectedly shut down. After opening less than five months ago, the owner of Hot Rod and Grit sent a letter of resignation to the Comanche County Commissioners. Commissioners announced today it has been closed. The letter says Lynn Wilson is closing it because of personal hardships. She began moving her belongings out of the cafe last Friday and should be completely moved out tomorrow. The commissioners say technically the leaseholder is required to give the county 30 days notice to break the lease. However, under the circumstances, they are allowing Wilson and to move on without any legal consequences. An out-of-control car caused quite a bit of damage outside of Nalta's restaurant last night. Police, fire, and ambulance crews were called to Val's It's About Time restaurant on Main a little before 9.30 after a driver hit a pickup parked outside. We are told that car crossed the center line, hit the pickup, and then pushed it into the restaurant's brick wall. The impact also pushed the pickup into another truck, truck rather, parked behind it.
And a hydro woman has been killed in a crash, and now the Oklahoma Highway Patrol is investigating. OHP says 55-year-old Twyla Marshall was driving east on a Caddy County Road near Hinton when she slammed into a tractor trailer. They say did not stop at an intersection. Troopers say Marshall, who died at the scene, was wearing a seatbelt. Again, the accident remains under investigation. And OHP says another car crash left an Apache woman with serious injuries. Troopers say 26-year-old Amber Mithlow was driving on a Caddo County Road early yesterday when she slid on some gravel, hit a barbed wire fence, and the car rolled. She was taken to Comanche County Memorial Hospital. Investigators listed the cause of the crash as driving under the influence of alcohol. An Oklahoma inmate convicted of murder during a crime spree in 1999 won't get another day in court. The U.S. Supreme Court has rejected the appeal of death row inmate Stephen Ray Thacker today. The state attorney general announced it. Thacker pleaded guilty to first-degree murder, kidnapping, and first-degree rape in the December 1999 stabbing death of 25-year-old Lacey Dawn Hill of Bixby. Thacker received the death penalty. He was also sentenced to death in Tennessee for the January 2nd 2000 killing of a tow truck driver and a life in prison in the January 1st 2000 death of a Missouri man. An Oklahoma soldier convicted in the killing of an Iraqi prison detainee has a new legal team today, and that team has filed a strongly worded petition with the U.S. Supreme Court for First Lieutenant Michael Behenna. It says that the nation's highest military court issued a wrong and dangerous decision last year, confirming his conviction in the unpremeditated murder case. Behenna maintains the shooting was in self-defense. His new attorneys say the Supreme Court should hear the case because he was deprived of the same right of self-defense afforded to police officers. Bahena is serving a 15-year prison sentence at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. A judge has refused to dismiss a civil lawsuit that accuses a Tulsa megachurch of trying to cover up the rape of a 13-year-old girl by a worker on the church's campus. The lawsuit accuses employees of not reporting the August rape to the authorities while the church conducted an in-house investigation. The Victory Christian Center argued the girl's mother who filed the suit is not entitled to any relief under the law. Ex-janitor Chris Denman was sentenced to 55 years in prison after pleading guilty to multiple sex-related charges. Denman admitted to raping the teenage girl in a stairwell on church property. The mother is asking for more than $75,000 in damages. McDreamy actor Patrick Dempsey of Grey's Anatomy, now the proud owner of a coffee chain in Seattle. And he beat out Starbucks to get it. I need to get to know the communities, and I, I feel that I need to spend a lot more time here, and I really like it here. I mean, I like waking up and being in this town. The actor, also often called McSteamy, may soon be serving up his own hot steaming cups to Joe. Dempsey won a bankruptcy auction to buy Tully's Coffee, a small chain. The win for Dempsey deals a rare setback for Starbucks on its home turf. Dempsey says that as the underdog in Seattle, Tully's will focus on quality. Tammy Church already is one happy customer. The coffee is so good. <laughs> um, to see me dreamy just a little bit. <laughs> he is quite handsome. Chaotic scenes inside a courtroom, outrage outside. Two of the defendants in the horrific rape and murder of an Indian woman try to save their hides, what they've agreed to. And Secretary of State Hillary Clinton returns to work and wait till you see the gift her colleagues at State had for her. Clouds have arrived from our next system. When will the rain start to arrive? We'll have a look at that timeline coming up. You're watching 7 News at 4 with Jan Stratton, Joe Belanger with Skywarn 7 Weather, and Caroline Kimbrell with MedWatch 7. This is Skywarn 7 Weather with meteorologist Joe Belanger. Very gloomy Monday here to start the work week. The sunshine was great the past couple days, a really very comfortable weekend we got to enjoy, but clouds have taken back over. These actually are the first onsets of the next system that we are expecting to get later in this week in the next couple days here. East side of Lawton showing those clouds that we were picking up there with the radar and satellite, definitely very visible. 51 degrees, we were able to sneak into the 50s thanks to the winds being out of the south. The clouds are going to stay the night. They have packed their overnight bag and they'll be with us right on through the next several days actually. The rain chances are going to pick up starting tomorrow and then really be in full force 
for Wednesday. We'll have a breakdown with that in just a second here. Here's a look at your current temperatures right now. We Just a lot of us, in fact, most of us have made it into the 50s, including Duncan, Wichita Falls, Lawton Altus, Vernon, uh, a little bit in the, the warm spot right now. You see 53 degrees. A few 40s still on the map up by I-40, 48 in Chickasha, Hobart, and Elk City. Uh, if it wasn't for these clouds, these temperatures would definitely be probably almost another 10 degrees warmer, but the clouds have limited the heating that has been able to take place for today. Satellite and radar showing the system off towards our west. These are the clouds that are starting just the onsets of it. No rain yet starting to fall. Counterclockwise rotation with the low pressure system is bringing in a south wind. If you remember low pressure, that's where the air converges and then rises, and so that helps promote the clouds, which you see there are plenty of clouds here in our region. The winds out of the south, like we said, 5 to 15 miles an hour. They'll continue to be out of the south here for another day, but for tonight, the speeds will be very cooperative. Microcast will walk us through here hour by hour, right on through tonight, into tomorrow, and into Wednesday. This is when all the changes are going to start to happen, as we see tomorrow morning. The clouds, you'll wake up to the clouds sticking around, really mostly cloudy conditions throughout the entire day tomorrow. And as we head towards Tuesday night into Wednesday, this is around 6 p.m. Tuesday night, you notice the first signs of some rain starting to get picked up, especially down there in North Texas. The system is going to arrive from the south, so that's why places like Graham, Wichita Falls, Bowie are going to be the first ones to start seeing some drops of rain fall from the sky. Then as we go through later in the day, this is going to be 11 p.m. Tuesday night. The rain continues to move to the north. The bulk of the rain is scheduled to be along that I-35 corridor. So off towards our east, but we will get our fair share of it as well. As you wake up Wednesday morning, you will likely hear some rain on the roof, and that's why we're encouraging you to bring uh, an umbrella to work, especially Wednesday, as that looks to be the bullseye of the rain. Rain chances broken down here Tuesday night. You see the better chances off towards the south, and then as we fast forward into Wednesday, you see everyone fair game on Wednesday with very good rain chances. In terms of totals, these are early estimations as we look, go ahead through the time time frame mostly dry tomorrow the rain coming in later in the day this is midnight tomorrow night Wednesday morning you seeing the total starting to creep up here about a half inch for Lawton we are projecting to be about a half an inch to an inch this may be overdoing it a little bit a little wishful thinking but we'll cross our fingers and see what we can get out of this next rainmaker tonight's forecast partly cloudy and chilly dropping down to the low 30s Tomorrow's forecast, late day showers, and the best chances are going to stay to the south. 52 degrees for our afternoon highs tomorrow. We'll stay in the 50s through Thursday. 90% chance of some rain on Wednesday, definitely the wettest day. It will come to an end on Thursday. Friday, very warm, up in the upper 60s, near 70. But it comes to a screeching halt. Don't get too excited because those 40s will be back here by next week. As they should be. As they should be, but I do enjoy those warmer temperatures. Okay, Joe, thank you. You're welcome. Well, the president learned he can't please everybody, especially when he announced his latest cabinet appointment, who Obama picked. Follow 7 News on Twitter and Facebook with news and weather updates. President Obama has announced his nominations for two important cabinet positions at the Pentagon and CIA. Republican Chuck Hagel for Defense Secretary, John Brennan for Director of CIA. Both picks are being criticized by both parties. Diana Perez reports. President Obama announcing his nominations for Director of CIA and Secretary of Defense. To help meet the challenges of our time, I'm proud to announce my choice for two key members of my national security team. Chuck Hagel for Secretary of Defense and John Brennan for Director of the Central Intelligence Agency. His pick to fill the top position at the Pentagon, Republican Chuck Hagel, has drawn criticism from members of the former senator's own party. The decorated Vietnam vet is a friend of both the president and vice president. A businessman after the war, he made millions in the cell phone industry before turning to politics. But some of Hagel's comments when he served as a Republican senator from Nebraska have not been forgotten and could lead to tough questioning and a long confirmation process. In 2007, he called a troop surge in Iraq a mistake. The most dangerous foreign policy blunder in this country since Vietnam. In 2008, Hagel upset many lawmakers when he referred to Israel's U.S. supporters as the Jewish lobby. He has not been a friend to Israel. This is an in-your-face nomination. 
Hagel will replace Leon Panetta. President Obama has nominated John Brennan to replace in battle General Petraeus as director of the CIA. Here, too, members of both sides are calling the pick controversial. Brennan was linked to enhanced interrogation techniques during the Bush years, even withdrawing his name for the same position in 2008. But he denies involvement and as head of counterterrorism was actively involved in the killing of Osama bin Laden and is considered close to President Obama. While neither confirmation is guaranteed, the White House says it's confident that both Chuck Hagel and John Brennan will assume these positions for the president's second term. Diana Perez, ABC News, New York. She's back. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton returned to work today after being absent with health problems for about a month. And when she walked in the room, she had a standing ovation from 75 people assembled. And then uh, Deputy Secretary Nides uh, presented her with a gift from all of us in a big box. And inside that box, a football helmet replete with the State Department seal. She also was given a football jersey that said Clinton on the back and the front said 112, which symbolizes the number of countries she's visited as Secretary of State. There have been chaotic scenes inside a court in Delhi, India, where five men have appeared charged with the gang rape and murder of a medical student on a bus in the city last month. The case has caused outrage across India. Two of the defendants have agreed to testify against the other suspects in an attempt to avoid the death penalty. Mike Wildridge reports. On their way to court from the Delhi jail where they're being held, Five of those accused over the brutal gang rape and death of the 23-year-old university student. This was a preliminary hearing taking place in the highly charged atmosphere the case has provoked in India. Security had been stepped up for the men's appearance in court and outside, demonstrators had gathered once again. Inside the building, there was such a scrum with dozens of lawyers, journalists and onlookers trying to cram into the courtroom that the magistrate ordered that the hearing take place behind closed doors. The protesters outside say they will not allow any lawyer to defend the accused. This lawyer, though, says they do have the right to be defended. Hang them by all means, he says, if they're proved guilty, but they should at least be given a fair chance. The student was attacked on this bus on December the 16th. She died later from massive internal injuries she suffered during her ordeal. The eruption of public anger over the case and over the treatment of women led to clashes during this protest in the heart of Delhi. Today's events at the court show that the sense of outrage and the profile of the case have hardly diminished. Mike Aldridge, BBC News. They're marching in Madrid, protesting the privatization of six hospitals and 27 health centers. Protesters, some of them wearing white medical coats, chanted as they walked. Right now, health care and education in the country are administered by Spain's 17 semi-autonomous regions rather than the central government. A new law passed last month allows Madrid's regional government to transfer the management of hospitals and health centers to private companies. One doctor said, quote, private companies will want to get profit out of this, so fewer diagnostic tests will be made for patients. They will hire fewer staff and pay Patients will be looked after worse. Now, Spain's regions are struggling with a combined debt of $190 billion as the country's economy contracts into a double dip recession. An enormous fire engulfed a shopping center. This in China today. Now take a look at the size of that. It began this morning at a home textile shopping center and swept through an area of more than 100 square, 100,000 square feet in fewer than four hours. And amazingly, no casualties in this five-story building. It's speculated the fire may have started from a welding accident. Well, they're putting the high in high school, literally, the shocking results of a new school survey. If you see news happening, call our news hotline at 355-NEWS. A recent survey finds the high in high school may reference more than just academic achievement. Caroline Kimbrell tells us more about this growing problem among students in today's Bed Watch Minute. 
Nearly 9 out of 10 high school students say that some of their classmates are either drinking alcohol, doing drugs, or smoking cigarettes during the school day. This is according to the 17th annual back to school survey from Columbia University's National Center on Addiction and Substance Abuse. Almost half of students say they know a fellow teen selling drugs on campus. For the sixth straight year, 60% of high school respondents say they attend a drug infected school. When it comes to private schools, more than half of students said drugs are prevalent on campus compared to just over a third of students last year. Three out of four teens who saw pictures on social networking sites of their peers partying with alcohol or marijuana said this encourages teens to party in the same way. Teens exposed to these types of pictures were four times more likely to have used marijuana and more than three times more likely to have used alcohol. And what parents think about drug use matters. When teens said their parents would be extremely upset if they used marijuana, they were four times less likely to have smoked pot. Parents are encouraged to talk to their kids about substance abuse and to stay actively engaged in their lives. I'm Caroline Kimbrell with today's MedWatch Minute. Here's what our 7 News team is working on for you this afternoon at 5. He is a convicted felon and registered sex offender, but one Texas pastor hopes his parishioners can look beyond all that. And an elderly woman waiting for paramedics to take her to the hospital had to wait a little longer. Someone had stolen their ambulance. Why the thief said he did it. And Joe says rain is on the way. He's going to tell you when with your Skywarn 7 day forecast coming up on 7 News at 5. Closed captioning is brought to you by American Ear, hearing aid, and audiology. If you see news happening, call our news hotline at 355-NEWS. One final look at your Skywarn 7-day forecast. We'll fall down to the low 30s tonight for our overnight lows. Tomorrow, back up to near 50. We do see the clouds stay with us. The rain chances will begin tomorrow, too, although they won't be till later in the day and mainly for our southern counties down there in north Texas. Wednesday is going to be the big rain day. We should see some excellent chances at some point throughout the day. You will get wet, so make sure you have the umbrella handy. Any rain that we do get will come to an end by Thursday. And then Friday, look at Friday, near 70 degrees. We haven't been up in that category in so long. It's been a bit of a cool stretch we've been in. And then... It doesn't last long. The 40s do return by next week. But all in all, a good weekend, Jan. It is. Did you get out at all to enjoy the past weekend? I enjoyed weekend? it. I'm trying to remember what I did. I can't remember. Just as make far something as yesterday, up. it was great. It was great. <laughs> Went golfing. It really was. Enjoyed I didn't it. do yeah. that. <laughs> Thanks for joining us at 7 News at 4. Hope you'll join us again at 5. See you back here in 30 minutes. <laughs>